If you're thinking about getting Sound ID or iCase Arc Studio or maybe a monitor controller or a high-end better DAC amp for your headphones or speakers, I have a better one all-in-one solution for you. So stick around. Topping DX5 2. I know what you're thinking. That's an audio file gear. Wait, hear me out. This effectively replaces Sound ID or iCase Arc Studio, monitor controller, and a high quality DAC amp for headphones and speakers with switchable EQ profiles. Okay, before we go further, my name is Joven. Welcome to Project Beats. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos or not exactly like this, help support the channel by hitting subscribe and commenting below. Really helps me out. Okay, so I have been out for a while. My initial video of uh, the DX52 was like two months ago. I have been really busy with work and I gotten sick. Still recovering. I may sound slightly sick. <laughs> but anyway, I will try to catch up and upload more videos this month. Also, big thanks to Sam Audio here in Singapore for lending me a demo unit of the Topping DX52 to review. I'm not paid to do this review. I don't have an affiliate link with them. But if you're in Singapore, get your DX52 at Sam Audio. Tell them I sent you. Links will be in the description. Okay, so moving on. And by the way, if you're new around here, I'm a studio guy, so my perspective is coming from that point of view. But products like the DX52 slowly blurs the line between professional studio needs and the audiophile space. I own the Sound ID and I think they are a bit outdated and unreliable in my opinion. But let me clarify, outdated in the headphone space because if you're not aware and without diving into it too much, here is where I encourage you to do your own research as well. So there is a shift into neutral being a range. You can look at things like preference bounds or diffuse field or harmon targets. These are basically research-based targets of what is preferred when listening with headphones. So... To me, flat shouldn't really be a thing, especially on headphones. Neutral, yes, but ear gain should be considered. But the way Sound ID does flat is just a terrible sounding headphones, in my opinion. Although X1 does neutral way better. So my issue is the way they handle headphone correction. A lot of users like me have requested for a diffuse field, tilted diffuse field, harmon target, etc., for more than three years now from Sonarworks. I think maybe more. There's a lot of requests for that and I don't think they even care about it. So it's not gonna be in their pipeline anytime soon. That's just one issue. Another thing is it's software based. So you are bound to have glitches, distortions, among other things, which at this point, if I'm honest, I'd rather hear my speakers raw without corrections. I paid for my Sonarworks so I'm starting to hate it. <laughs> iCase Arc is a similar product, but you have external DSP. I don't have personal experience with that. You can look up some reviews. I've seen some pros and cons, but that's another device on your desk. What if one device can act as your correction, room correction, and headphone profile correction, monitor controller, high-end DSP, DAC amp in one? So this is where the DX5 comes in. Actually, the price is relatively similar to the Sound ID headphones and speaker full license, and you get more features. I did a brief intro before, so I'll go straight up to what I like about it. First thing, Mac OS Topping Tune app, finally. 
I don't have the DX5 II with me anymore, but during that time that I had it, there was no Mac app for it. I had to use like virtual Windows app to set my EQ and then export that profile into the device and you know, all that jazz. But now they do have the Mac app. I mean, I made it as my number one feature that I like because you're going to be using that app a lot, especially in the studio or if you're an audiophile who likes to tinker, maybe upgrade the sound of your current headphones or speakers to give them a bit of a different character or correct tuning. <laughs> so number two, room correction. It's not going to be as full featured as like RME ADI 2 FS um, with dedicated speaker profile separate from the headphone profiles, but it's close enough. The great thing about the EQ correction profile on the DX5 too is it has separate left and right channel correction for your speakers. Versus when you're correcting for headphones, you tune them both, of course, at the same time. The difference is when you are seated in your room, like this, sometimes independent speakers, you know, left, right, depending on where it's placed, have minor variations in room modes. So that means you can apply separate correction for your speaker profiles. So, like in my setup, I have the left speaker in the corner of the room. I do have uh, sound panels right behind. But the sound will come to me slightly differently EQ'd or tuned compared to the right side, right? So independent EQ correction f on the DX5 II solves that problem. So that means it effectively replaces the sound ID. The caveat is purely EQ correction. You don't have timing and phase correction. No options there so far, but hopefully they can do an update to add that later on if that is possible. I'd be willing to to pay for that update, even if it's paid. So the way you do that is with uh, REW uh, software, you do your nine point measurement from your listening space. So for me, it's here. I do my nine point, you average them separately, left and right, and then upload a Harman house or whatever you like to use, and then apply auto EQ correction based on your average against the Harman house. After you get your result, you would have to apply the EQ profile on the DX5 II manually. I don't think there is a way to export it um, as a profile that DX5 II Tune app will recognize. I'm not sure, but as far as I know, it doesn't work like that. So you have to manually EQ it in the DX5 II based on all this uh, measurement that you, that you did. So yeah, that's it. That's your room correction. You need a good measurement mic though. So U-Mic 1 is my recommendation. Um, I used to have a Behringer mic, that's okay. They have a version 2 Behringer mic with, um, what do you call that, profile correction? I forgot, well, I'll put in. Um, but the caveat there is it doesn't measure below 40. So if you have a smaller speakers, that should be fine. Um, also granted, it's not as easy to do as compared to the way Sound ID does it. Um, but then again, you have external DSP, so you avoid glitches. I mean, pros and cons, right? To me, that's a powerful correction tool by itself. The only con is that you have to toggle speaker profiles with the rest of your headphone profile. So when you switch to headphone, you have to switch and toggle through all your different EQ profiles. So there is no direct profile memory switch like in the RME ADI 2 um, But then again, with the price difference, I'll happily take the DX5 too. In Singapore, it's around 400 uh, Singapore dollars. RME in Singapore is like 2.5, but you can get it like 2,000 SGD. Big price difference. Third thing that I like is the AB speaker switching. In that tiny box, there are two separate speaker output. So let me go through all the, the outputs. You have two headphone out, single-ended, and balance out. For balance out, you have 4.4 and 4 pin XLR. Both output the same thing, so it counts as one output. There's no independent control in the unit and in the remote, so that's two headphone outs, technically, even if you see three um, headphone outs. The kicker is you have two separate outputs, XLR balance and single-ended RCA with independent controls, so you can apply EQ profile corrections for either of your speaker. Not even the $2,000 RME ADI 2FS have dual speaker out. <laughs> I have a baby RAM here, Heritage 500 baby RAM, I forgot. But that's my uh, monitor controller and input. You, you have two monitors and two inputs. Mute, dim, and mono. 
with the DX52, I don't have a need for this. It can handle all those tasks. The one thing that the baby RAM has that the DX52 doesn't have is dim and uh, mute. For sure, there, there is one, but dim and mono. I have mute here and mono functionality there. So I still keep it around for, you know, some of the functions. It can be a deal breaker for some of you guys, but, but just to put it out there, that's some of the limitations. The way I had it set up before, I had a profile for my Kali N8, which is the big monitor here, and one profile for the Audio-Technica SP3X. Though that one, I use as my real-life AB reference monitor, so I don't really need a correction for that. That feature is powerful. That means I don't need this huge monitor, not unless I really can't do without that mono and uh, dim and mute switch. But yeah, that's some limitations. This isn't the DX52, by the way. Not sure if you can figure out from your angle right there. Uh, but yeah, that's not the DX52. That's for another video, though, if you can figure it out. So moving on, those features alone makes the DX52 worth every penny for me. It's not expensive either. In fact, it's so successful, the next batch won't be out until like end of October. Um, so it's sold out everywhere. I think Sam Audio has a few remaining in stock, but yeah, if you like to get one now, good luck trying to find one. <laughs> but seriously, I think it's the next best move for any one of you who are serious in mixing and those of you who has a good set of headphones for mixing. We can honestly end the video right here. Not sure if you can tell, but I'm really excited about this product and, and if you understand why this is an exciting product. Um, but before you guys comment, why are you recommending hi-fi audiophile stuff for studio people? I mean, did you not get the whole point I mentioned just now? <laughs> I haven't even touched on the sound quality of this thing. By the way, guys, again, I'm a studio guy, so audiophile related questions, etc. I mean, I'll try to answer them if you are explicitly asking for my opinion and recommendations. Sure. But... Questions that you can Google easily, please, guys, <laughs> Google it first. Then if you're confused or you want clarification, then by all means, let me know. Okay, sound quality, fourth one. Here's where it gets uh, interesting. Full transparency, I endorse Cord Electronics. For some of you who don't know, my main weapon of choice, Cord Hugo 2. Also, I have the Mojo 2, but here's the thing, and it's going to be controversial. Well, maybe, I don't know. So... I like the Kali N8 better with the DX52. <laughs> Again, my priority is clarity, transparency, openness. Sound-wise, DX52, it's a little bit more open and, and bright on the top end. Versus the Hugo 2. For the speakers, just to be clear. I use the Hugo 2 as desktop DAC, by the way. If that needed to be said, I, I don't know. But headphones, of course... Sound quality, I prefer the Hugo 2 much better. But it's not a competition, you know, it's just not in the same price range at all. Not marketed to the same people. I'm just saying, the difference though, for me, the big difference, is in the DSP and EQ. Yeah, at this point in time, I really need that. Um, there's very limited um, filters on the Hugo 2. It's FGPA processing versus the DX52, which is full DSP. Function-wise, the Yugo 2 is sort of an endgame mixing mastering headphone DAC amp and is transportable, built-in battery and all that, but you have to rely on software-based EQ correction, which now, to be honest, I'm not really into and actually I'm trying to get rid of. For the price though and the EQ profile DSP, actually the DX52 sways me to add it to the studio. So yeah, tonality-wise, it's a bit more clinical, neutral if you want to say that, so for audio files, you will probably enjoy the DX3 Pro Plus more for listening pleasure, especially if you're not into EQing, which I get. By the way, that's not to say that the Hugo 2 is, is colored. It isn't. It just leans more on that like musical and soulful side and gives you that tiny bit more presence and clarity on the low end on the Hugo 2. In general, the DX52 is an upgrade if you're not using any DAC amp previously. You get better imaging, staging, resolution, clarity. It's a little bit on the brighter side, I want to say. It's more on like um, the clinical side of things, which at the moment I like for when I'm mixing. If you're looking for a more affordable, critical, analytical sound for your speakers, especially, 
And if you have been using your recording interface as your DAC amp, of course, you all started there. Um, it doesn't matter what brand you're using, if it's entry to mid-level or let's just, let's just say this, if it's not Apollo Mark II or Apogee Symphony Desktop, DX5 II beats most of them in sonic performance. And functionality. So again, if you're serious in upping your mixing game and you're not ready for the Hugo 2 or RME ADI 2, this is the way to go. Next point, and this might be a pro or a con depending on how you look at it, is ease of use. It's simple, very easy to use. It's not as convenient as the RME in my opinion. Especially in my case, I have five headphones. <laughs> A couple of IEMs and uh, RME has better recall and custom controls on the RME remote. Also, you can use MIDI mapping to control the RME. The DX52 has a very basic remote. It's not really designed for pro studios in mind, I don't think. But there is a way to make life easier. One option is to utilize custom scenes or modes. You can set two custom modes. There are two different custom buttons on the remote. I would suggest setting a speaker AB mode for one and then another mode for headphones AB mode. So let's say on custom one you have your set of EQ profiles for your speakers and then you turn on speakers disable headphones out or maybe enable one headphone out and EQ profiles. Because again if you don't do that you'll be toggling all your profiles. I ended up with like eight profiles or something for headphones and speakers so it can get annoying. But if you have one headphone and one speaker, then toggling two to three EQ profiles should not be too much of a problem. Another thing I'd like to do is turn off the all speaker and all headphone out, meaning that option where they all sound at the same time. Unless you have a need for that, I would turn that off. Um, that means when you toggle your output, either by remote or by pressing the volume knob on a device whenever you switch. By the way, there's a bit of delay when you switch output and the EQ profile. The RME has a delay only on switching outputs. So now you see why toggling eight EQ profiles can get a bit annoying. Anyway, when you switch output, the previous device mutes. So if you toggle from speakers to headphones, the speakers become muted. If you turn off that play all speakers or play all headphones option. So you can set that as another scene if you like. So yeah, it's not the end of the world. You can make it work efficiently depending on what you do and what you like. Lastly, EQ Profiles, which is the star of the show. Um, they have recently added EQ Profiles in some of their DAC amps, not all. Another one that has the EQ Profiles, I think it's the A90 and the new flagship, the big DAC amp one. I forgot, it's 900, I forget the model. But yeah, you have 10 band full PEQ. This won't be a lesson on how to EQ. If you want that, let me know. But here's a clip of how I did mine, if I still have that clip. <laughs> EQ is easy to do. One thing to note, the EQ sounds very organic, at least for me. The change is somewhat subtle, comparing it to the Sound Source app, which I used previously with a Hugo 2. Somehow I feel like it's walking that line of like audiophile and professional where audiophile goes ah EQ <laughs> and professional correction of course where we need that EQ to, to fix headphones or speakers. So yeah, fully functional with profile toggle that you can set on the remote. By the way, Topping makes great quality professional audio interface so they kind of know what they're doing. They have some of the cleanest mic preamps at least on review and on paper. You got high quality DACs, not quite the same level at the DX5 too I don't think. Though that would be awesome if they make an interface with you know mixing mastering level DAC amp. But yeah, some of the best affordable recording interface out there, look it up. Anyway, now when you save your profiles, I'll show you some of the profiles I had. Um, you can have the profile save on the app, um, desktop app, and then you can move them to the device from within that app. Say you want a faster workflow, then you keep the ones you use less on the app, then move the ones you need on the device, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think that covers most of what I want to talk about for the DX5 II. This is a killer DAC amp, although not explicitly made for the studio and professional use case, which I wish they put some of that features in in the future. I'd highly recommend it if you're looking for a better, you know, listening experience for your studio. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Appreciate you guys. See you in the next project. Thank you.
Thank you.